G'day to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's an awesome autumn day. It's the 27th of May and uh, a very, very important day in, uh, in my life because it's my birthday <laughs> and I turned 61 today. Uh, but I think I'll stop counting at 59 given that we had COVID-19 last year. It's probably a good excuse to uh, stop the clock, or at least stop the birthday clock, so that we can uh, make make the most of the uh, time we have, and hit a pause buzz, hit the pause button, should I say, to uh, just slow down life just a tinge. Anyway, today I'm going to uh, talk about an important topic, a book, which is entitled a powerful, a powerful, powerful title. Forgiving What You Can't Forget. It's a book which, in, in, uh, which calls us to action to try and forgive all of those things that we can't forget. Because if you can forget something, then obviously you're forgiven it. But uh, the things that you can't forget require a little bit more effort, according to this author. So the author kicks off the book with a wonderful quote where um, she says, and uh, her name is Lisa Tur Turkhurst. Lisa Turkhurst. So it's a female author, and hence why it's a, it's a beautiful book, because it get, takes us to a, a deeper level of understanding in terms of forgiveness, and how we can heal ourselves from the many pains that we pick up along the way. And it's important to understand that uh, nobody is immune from pain, and it uh, happens to all of us, um, and it's a part of us growing up, and it's a part of life. So the author then kicks off with a, a beautiful quote, as I mentioned, and the quote is, the ability to heal cannot be conditioned on them wanting forgiveness, but only on my willingness to give it. So uh, even if somebody wants forgiveness, um, it's not enough. Um, if people are sorry for what they've done, or even if they're not sorry for what they've done, the important thing, according to this author, is for you to be in a position and to want to uh, release the toxicity and to allow uh, you to heal by forgiving those around us. And of course, by forgiving other people, and by letting go, yeah, in effect, you know, that forgiveness is also allowing them to heal as well. Because we don't want to carry around um, other people's issues and challenges, and we want to try and live our lives as, as, uh, as, as clear as possible without having a, a, a backpack full of regrets and full of challenges that we've created for ourselves over the years. So the author talks a little bit more deeply about this whole thing about resentment and she calls us to action once again to let go of the resentment that comes when someone hurts us um, and just to understand that uh, you know, you know that letting go of that resentment is probably the key so um, the author then goes on to talk about trauma and a lot of these uh, episodes that, that come into our lives. And th things become traumatic as we're growing up, not because what has happened to us is bad. It's just that we're not at a stage, we're not at a level of development or maturity to be able to handle it and to process it um, properly and to have the support around us to enable us to uh, to work through it, you know. So, uh, you know, what could you know, what that what could have been traumatic for me? I'll get it out. What could have been traumatic for me to somebody else may may be not traumatic, you know. So the important thing to understand is that we're all different. We all see the world differently. We've all got a different baseline and different level of experiences and and learnings and. Um, and wisdom to be able to, for us to, to deal with these things 
You know, some of that wisdom comes from our family, some of it comes culturally, some of it comes from our belief systems, our religion. You know, so depending on where you are on your growth and development um, um, trajectory will also impact how you deal with trauma at different times of your life. And as I said, for some people it could be tremendous trauma and tremendous grief that was caused by an incident and yet for somebody else it may not be anything at all but we need to respect that each and every one of us is different and we're going to um, interpret things differently as well and just to understand that uh, we need to manage that so the author then goes on to say here that uh, dealing with your traumas is harder if you try to be too optimistic about it. Um, and I've sat and thought about this and I thought, wow, this is, this is pretty interesting because um, I guess for those who know me, um, I am an optimistic sort of person. But the author here says that, uh, you know, being too optimistic all the time could also be a sign of somebody who's trying to get through trauma. Uh, which is interesting because you know you don't really think that you know we come across people in our lives who are confident who are optimistic who are positive but what the author here is saying that um, if you try to be too optimistic and too positive then that in itself may be masking something uh, quite sinister below the surface um, and then the author then goes on to say that we're all different in terms of how we grieve when it comes to trauma that we receive through our lives. And people who suffer pain, people who suffer pain through their lives will often do things to numb it. Uh, and once again, this is a very, very sensitive topic, so I don't want people to think that we're uh, flippant when we talk about these sorts of topics. But the author here says that people who suffer pain and who have suffered trauma throughout their lives will do things to try and numb it and to try and push it away or push it under the carpet rather than face it. So uh, you know, there's, there's a something here which is quite important in terms of having to face your traumas and having to face your pain in order to deal with it. And the, t the telltale signs of people who have suffered trauma in their lives is that they're um, uh, reliant or they experiment with drugs. They, uh, they tend to drink a lot more than normal. So alcohol seems to be a coping mechanism for people who are, who are dealing with uh, trauma throughout their lives. Um, substance abuse, um, smoking too much, uh, doing everything in an excessive sort of form um, may be an indicator um, that somebody is dealing with some sort of trauma. And the other thing here that I wasn't quite aware of and I, I find quite interesting is that uh, people who have suffered trauma in their life are also the ones who are more likely to uh, indulge in casual sex and to uh, have multiple partners so, um, and of course, the other one is some try to cover up by being too, you know, appearing too happy, um, too confident, and too positive all the time. But the author goes on to say that at the end of the day, we all need to face our fears, face our traumas, and face our feelings because you simply can't deny the feelings that are created through these traumatic events in, our, in people's lives. And the only way to heal is to deal and to face with reality. Now stop avoiding forgiveness. Um, so you need to move on. And the only way you can move on is by forgiving the people around us and forgiving ourselves. 
So the art of forgiveness is a very, very powerful, powerful one indeed. And the author then goes on to talk about a few tricks that uh, she's incorporated and learnt throughout her life to be able to deal with these things. And the technique that she uses is called collect, connect and correct. Collect, connect and correct the dots of your past. So uh, according to this author, and as I say, I'm an emissary. I don't feel as if I've been through dramatic traumas in, the li in my life. But as I say, uh, the purpose, the objective of Jim's 5am club is for, for me to be the messenger. To be able to take what other people have written, to try and express it and um, articulate it as best I can. And hopefully, you know, it may be received by somebody today, tomorrow, who knows when, um, and used to uh, help them um, get through the challenges that they may be facing. And I guess we all, at the end of the day, receive traumas and challenges throughout our lives at different stages of our lives. So what I'm learning today, what I'm talking about today, I may be using myself in months, years to come. So hopefully not, but uh, a lot of this stuff we learn, we can incorporate it and we can live, learn and pass it on or use it um, and, um, and pass it on as well. So uh, the important thing according to this author is to forgive and to let go. And this is the spiritual message that I've received many, many times from uh, my spiritual father um, who, who basically says that, you know, when you get married, you know, each and every day, you need to seek and offer forgiveness to your partner. You need to seek forgiveness from your partner and offer forgiveness for your partner because without doubt, each and every one of us are letting us down in massive ways on a daily basis. So the author goes on to talk about these three techniques, the collect, connect, and correct. And she says that you first need to collect the dots, which means that you need to revisit your past and to um, try and identify any unresolved traumas, any unresolved situations that you have, where you haven't forgiven the people who may have caused you that trauma or that discomfort you know, be it somebody else or be it yourself, wh whoever it is. But the first thing is to try and identify those moments, those defining moments in our lives that uh, have a, a lingering and a long-term impact. And once you've uh, collected those dots or those episodes, the next thing we need to do is to uh, revisit uh, is to connect the dots. Sorry, so we've re so you revisit and then you connect the dots, and then we need to go through and uh, revise our belief systems on those dots. So it means that sometimes we need to reframe what happened because we're older now, we're more mature, we realize that people aren't what they seem all the time, and friendships come and go, people. Know, grow and develop and change. Uh, they 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 you know they go into different social circles. They mix with different people, and they um, become an average of the five people that they mix most with. So it just makes for our own growth and development. So we need at some point in time to go back, have a look at what some of those challenges were in our lives, and then to examine our beliefs. From the past and ensure that we, as we say, we reframe them in a, with a positive spin and uh, get around them in a way which will allow us to serve ourselves. And uh, this reframing is used to reshape the message and the stories that we talk about our past and we talk about our future. Uh, one thing that I really, really liked and really made an impact on me at uh, Prince Philip's funeral. When I was saying that 
even though he had a traumatic childhood, um, you know, brought up in Greece, brought up in a rural family, then all of a sudden, um, you know, he has all these issues and he's, he goes from boarding school to boarding school. His father is a philanderer and goes off and marries somebody else. His mother has a, has a breakdown, you know. There are so many things that he could have been bitter about. But one of his uh, close friends and attendants said that he never ever complained. He never ever used that as an excuse to not do things or to, to be bitter about his life. He just accepted it and said that this is my life, this is my, um, this is my calling, this is the situation that I'm, I'm in, and not to whinge about it, just to deal with it and to get beyond it. So the, uh, so it's all about correcting, so it's all about being able to be mature enough to understand that our parents, our grandparents, our uncles, our aunts, our partners, our children, um, our, our bosses, our work peers. You know, everybody's growing and everybody is at a different stage of their development. Um, some people are you know, still spiritual pygmies, even though when they're in their 50s. But sooner or later, we're all going to grow up because we're going to have multiple experiences that are going to force us to grow up and to mature and to uh, understand the world a little bit better. The author here finishes off her book by saying that forgiveness doesn't happen in one moment. It can though, you know, it can, um, is my understanding. You know, you, you know, just like you can fall in love in a heartbeat, you can you know, fall out of love in a heartbeat, you can also forgive in a heartbeat and move on as well. Um, you don't have to be mortal enemies with people who you're no longer friendly with. You don't have to be, you know, um, you know, hating. You don't have to hate somebody who you're divorced from. Just learn to live with it and to uh, not blame them, not blame yourself, and just try and manage the rest of your years without stressing out and without uh, causing um, the pain and suffering that a lot of people go through um, unnecessarily is, is the point that I'm trying to make. But the author here says that for those who can't forgive in the moment, then forgiveness, forgiveness um, takes time. Uh, every trauma, according to this author, will bring both an initial and a long-term impact. And we've talked about this time and time again, you know, but uh, you know, divorce, for example, uh, will impact a family initially. But most of the divorced people, sadly, that, uh, that uh, um, are in the world, you know, tend to have the problem which just lingers with them and it certainly lingers with the children for years and years and years. So, uh, you know, from the author's perspective, the final point that she makes is that forgiveness is a journey um, and you need to keep on working at it to uh, make sure that it doesn't make you bitter and it doesn't take you down, I guess is the point that I'm trying to make and finish up on. So thank you very much for joining me on this momentous episode of Jim's 5am Club. I've got five more to go to reach my thousand. I will try and get them done today because my goal was to finish a thousand in English on my or by my 61st birthday. And my 61st birthday is today. And... Um, that's one, one down, and I've got uh, five to go. So I can't wait to get to the end of the day, and it may be midnight, uh, depending on how we uh, get through this day, but we'll see how we go. So if you like, yeah, uh, from Jim's 5am club, and we'll chat again shortly. So uh, see you later, and bye for now.